So, what does a hairstyle have to do with brewing on a V60? Well, today things are gonna get a little hairy. Let's start brewing. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to our latest coffee video. I'm Rob, and I'm here with Caldi's Coffee to talk more about the hows and the whys of my favorite way to brew on the V60 coffee dripper, a method that I like to call the reverse mullet. So before we get started though, we're going to come on really strong and say, we want to start a long-term relationship with you, like right now. We love to kick it in your YouTube feed more often, so be sure to click the like and the subscribe buttons, be able to see more of our channel and get more of our upcoming content. Okay, before we get started, I'm just going to go through a brief history of how I stumbled upon this method, the reverse mullet. So I had been brewing on the V60 for many, many years. Uh, through those years, I had trouble settling on a method. And so I kept tweaking, kept experimenting, kept watching more videos from other coffee nerds on YouTube and reading more about the science behind coffee brewing and finally landed on this one. So it takes a lot of sciencey stuff that you might hear about slurry temp, extraction theory, agitation, and applies it to the method to get something that's really consistent and really tasty. One thing to note, and I think it's really important, we're not saying that this is the only way to brew coffee or the right way or the most scientific way to do it. What we are saying though, and what I specifically am saying, this method just results in a cup that I love time after time after time, and I'm hoping it does the same for you. Okay, so let's talk about three things I have noticed in particular with this method. One, it's really consistent, and that's really important to me. It tastes very similar from brew to brew, and most importantly, it doesn't seem to have this stalling problem that can happen with other methods or even other brewers. Other smarter physicist type people might know more reasons why, but I'm guessing that this is caused by the fines in the slurry being more still, if you will, just kind of being locked in where they are. I've tried other recipes with hard pours that just blow out the fines and spray it everywhere inside the slurry. Um, and I always tend to get really long drain downs with those and maybe some inconsistent results in the cup, specifically talking about things like astringency. Number two, it's really forgiving. So sometimes I grind to fine for this. It's getting a little bit high in the brewer. Even though it goes a little longer than I wanted, it still turns out really good. If I grind a little too coarse, I'm able to kind of adapt to it, use a little bit more agitation up front, maybe hit it again with another pour, and that leads to a cup that I like. It has this wide window of quality, of a cup that you'll really like. Where over here, might be a little too weak and sour. Over here might be a little bitter and astringent, but it has this window of goodness in the middle that's rather wide and rather forgiving. Lastly, it's adaptable to larger brews. So I am a guy who likes to make little small cups, um, but I do sometimes make bigger cups and I've done all the way up to 40 grams with this method. Other methods out there are really locked into you have to pour 50 here and 100 here and 100 here. This one, you can just basically apply the same method to bigger brews, do the same thing over and over, and you'll get a great cup regardless. Okay, now that theory's out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about why we're calling this the reverse mullet. I'm gonna be honest. I don't have a great reason other than I needed something catchy to call it. And also because pour hard, go shaky shaky, dribble 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 wasn't so catchy. But for starters, let's talk about what a mullet is. It's business up front and it's a party in the back. So with this recipe, I'm starting with like a total rager. Just partying way up front, getting things super hot, super mixed up. It's like a mosh pit in the slurry. Then at the end, I'm just gonna do boring. Just boring business meeting. In fact, there's times when I'm doing the back half of this, I'm not going to lie, I'm almost just falling asleep. Just like a boring business meeting. Right guys? Right? Right? Like Just like our meetings? So essentially, we have rock and roll up front and we have business in the back, AKA the reverse mullet. Well, actually it would be this way, right? Business mullet. <laughs> okay. All right, just to recap before we get started. Three basic things with this. 
get everything wet as fast as possible, get everything hot as fast as possible, and then let gravity do the rest. Essentially, we're just going to match our input with the output. And that's the three basic tenets of this brew. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to take 16 grams of coffee. If you have the fellow oat at home, I have this on the original bird. I think I'm at one or two past one. So nearly as fine as it can go. Again, that's really a big thing with this method. So what I like to do, if you have the O, by the way, a little hack is we do the WDT method. We get it nice and wet. That helps discharge some of the static that's in the coffee beans and helps us re reduce the retention of the fellow oat. So for reference, this is about the grind size that you will want. It's a little bit, um, it's finer than sea salt for sure. Now I believe in a pre-wet, I don't think it necessarily does a lot with paper taste. I think especially if you're using white filters, it doesn't mean as much. But what I do like about it is it preheats the brewer. Again, trying to get it as hot as possible, as fast as possible. Okay, we're ready to start. So 16 grams in, let's see. All right, now we're gonna shake it flat. This is really important because we're really gonna start preparing the bed now. So we have 16 grams of coffee in, I'll tear the scale. This is another tool that I have. It's a glass stir stick. It's a little pretentious. You can use a pen, you can use a chopstick, you can use something that just is long and doesn't have a lot of drag on it. So what I like to do is start in the middle and just kind of push it out. I don't like to push down too hard. I'm just kind of flicking coffee out of the middle and onto the sides and that creates this nice divot. And that's it, we're ready to brew. So this is where I'm saying the mosh pit is starting. Even with the bloom, you want to start going hard at it, mixing everything around, getting it hot. So we'll start the timer, and I'm gonna pour right down the middle, pretty hard, with about two times the weight of the coffee. I'm gonna stop here at about 54 milliliters, and I'm gonna shake it. So this will help get things wet. And then that's where we use the stir stick, and we Move it all around, trying to find any dry pockets. We don't want dry pockets in the grounds. That's where we um, get into trouble because they're finding coffee that hasn't been wet yet. And that's against what we're trying to get with a nice, even, wet, hot slurry. All right, so at 45 seconds, we're going hard again. We're going full on mosh pit. So you'll see I'm almost full tilt on the kettle, just mashing it all up. I'll get it to about 100 milliliters. Don't have to be too precise about it. And now it's boring business time. So this is where I pour straight down the middle, maybe do some slight circles. And I'm really looking to get to the point where it's just starting to come out. If you notice, if I go too much in, it could stop. So if I go too far out, it has a longer pour. I'm just letting it fall straight down. Sometimes it's just dribbling out. And this is where the boring business part comes in. So I'm just letting it match output with input. Sometimes I just kind of drift away while this is happening. Start thinking about life, all the things I have done and haven't, mistakes that I've made, people I've wronged, my 200 milliliters. Uh, yeah, so one of the things you might notice as you get to this point of the brew is that the coffee on top I'm sorry, the water on top actually starts to turn clear. That's a good indication that you're using the proper amount of agitation. You're almost getting just like this nice, clear water just moving around the top of the bed and just interacting with it via gravity. So we're at two minutes and 40 seconds. We hit our target brew weight and now we just wait. We just wait for it to drain down. Most of the time I like to hit a time for single origins that are between three minutes and three minutes and 30 seconds and it doesn't have to be too precise in order to result in a very, very tasty cup. I like to give it one last little shake. All right, and that's it. We have a flat bed, we have a really tasty brew, and we're all done. Let's give it a taste. Spot on. So it is Really sweet, it has a great mouthfeel. I'm really picking up the fig bar. It's got that kind of breadiness with that 
kind of coating dark fruit sweetness in the middle. Yeah, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Really good. Okay, I've been Rob. This has been the reverse mullet. We did a business in the back. We did a rock and roll in the front and we had a great time while we did it. But before we go, we'd love to hear from you. What's your V60 method of choice? Have you ever had trouble with stalling in the V60? What did you do to solve it? Have you tried this method? How did it go? We'd really love to hear from you. But until then, we wish you the best. Happy brewing and see you next time. But wait, we have one more thing for you. If you're like us, you may have made the switch to the Hario Switch recently. So we have a really fast recipe to show you that basically uses the same thing that we just did in the reverse mullet, but adds one extra step. So with the switch, you're gonna leave it locked so that no water can come out. And all we're going to do is do a full immersion bloom. So we're just going to pour the bloom water in. I like to do about three times. So I'm gonna get up to about 60 grams of water. Stir it around. And that's it. I like to let this sit for about a minute and a half. So instead of a, about double a normal bloom. And what that's given me is even more sweetness, even more fruitiness, even better, thicker mouthfeel. And that's it. Thank you again for watching. Have a good day.